In an historic house with thousands of objects, caring for everything can seem like an impossible task. What makes it possible is a detailed housekeeping plan. A well-written housekeeping plan suggests weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly cleaning activities. It also provides cleaning instructions for types of materials, as well as specific instructions for the care of especially fragile or problematic objects. This settee, for example, is upholstered with an early 18th century silk brocade. It should be cleaned once a year at most, vacuumed at low suction through nylon screening. Developing an effective plan is a team effort involving curators, conservators, housekeeping, maintenance, and interpretive staff. Many sites don't have full written plans, but work from simple schedules. In this case, it is important that all housekeepers be thoroughly trained in all procedures. Care should be taken to point out all potential hazards and fragile objects, and housekeepers should keep written notes of problems they observe. Sometimes, scheduled public events will trigger particular housekeeping activities. And of course, unscheduled events will always crop up. Use your judgment as to when to deviate from the schedule. This 19th century bookcase was under attack by tunneling insects until they were discovered by a museum technician during routine cleaning. She reported what she found, and the insects were exterminated and the bookcase stabilized. Enemies like these are attacking historic properties day and night. To prepare your defenses, you need to be observant. Look over every object under your care. Is anything missing or broken? Does an object scheduled for cleaning need to be cleaned? If it does, clean it. But if it doesn't, leave it alone. Live plants are lovely in a space like this, but they bring dirt, insects, and moisture to the room. That's why all these plants are artificial. Historic objects, particularly fragile ones, should be handled as little as possible. Be aggressive in looking for problems, but restrained in handling objects. Routine cleaning should be non-invasive and usually limited to dusting, sweeping, vacuuming, and inspecting. Specialized cleaning involving water, solvents, or moving fragile objects should only be undertaken after consultation with your curatorial and conservation staff. It is important to always pay attention to the room envelope. Do you see any signs of moisture leaking through the plaster? Do you smell anything resembling mold or mildew? What about individual objects? Do you see any new accumulations of dirt, tracks, smears, evidence of bugs? You should know where to check for these signs. Can you detect airflow from leaky windows or around outlets? Do you see any new breaks or cracks in the glass? Are shutters and drapes in their proper position? Remember that for many materials, sun pouring in can be as damaging as rain pouring in, since colors fade and fabrics do break down. Finally, think about security. Look for signs of forced entry. Theft is an obvious danger, but simple vandalism can sometimes be just as damaging. Look carefully. No matter how cautious you are, accidents will happen and collection items damaged or lost. Whether you discover damage or cause it yourself, carefully collect the pieces. Wrap pieces individually in tissue paper so edges won't rub against each other. Never try to cover up damage by throwing out the evidence. Even the smallest particle can be useful in restoring an object. If you find damage or anything else that seems unusual or that requires action, be sure to report it. Nancy? Yeah, I found a broken jar locked again where my brush Know whom to report to. This is the next critical step 
toward solving problems. Let's review what we've said about preparing to clean. Have a plan and a schedule to guide your cleaning. Observe your space and the objects in it. Report any changes you find. Don't handle or clean objects unless it is necessary. If you discover damage or cause it yourself, save all the pieces and make a report. Time and its allies have countless ways of assaulting your house and your collection. You can't fight them with your bare hands. Fortunately, you don't have to. You have an arsenal of your own. Your tools are highly specialized and should be kept separate from general maintenance supplies. Ideally, you should have a storage closet on each floor. A tote bag can be useful for carrying supplies from room to room. The vacuum cleaner is the most important tool in your arsenal. No one vacuum cleaner is right for all applications. A canister type is usually best suited for large-scale cleanings, such as floors, walls, and large furnishings. It can be supplemented by a handheld vacuum suitable for small-scale jobs and difficult-to-reach spaces. The small models also reduce the risk of damage and provide better control with lower suction. Home uprights and water filtration vacuums are usually inappropriate for historic houses. Remember that the goal of vacuuming is to remove dirt, not to redeposit it on furnishings. Be sure your vacuum has filtration capabilities suitable for your needs. If you can afford to, purchase a vacuum with a HEPA, or High Efficiency Particulate Absolute Filtration System. Delicate cleaning tasks, such as vacuuming textiles, require control over the amount of suction. This is usually done with an air bleed device in the handle, by controlling the speed of the motor, or simply by holding the nozzle at an angle to reduce suction. Be sure you have all necessary attachments. You can purchase extra brush attachments and label them for clean work, such as textiles, and dirty work, such as floors. Historic objects should be handled as little as possible, but sooner or later someone will touch, and that someone will probably be you. Put that back, please. You're not ready to move anything yet. Before moving any historic object, you need to be prepared. Remove any jewelry that may clank against things or cause abrasions. Be sure your hands are clean. For sure handling, it is best not to wear gloves, unless you are working with metals or unglazed ceramics that are subject to damage from the natural oils on your hands. Before moving a small object, Check for movable parts and inspect for damage that could be worsened by a move. Lift the object by the main body. Move only one object at a time and support it fully as you move it. And always know where you will be going with the object. Handles are, of course, intended for lifting, but ignore them on historic objects and lift by the main body. With large objects, you will have to plan the move even more thoroughly. How will the object be carried? Are there any obstacles in the way? Where will it be placed? Inspect carefully for structural damage that could cause problems during handling. If the object is large, be sure you have enough people to move it safely and without strain. Lift the object by its most secure points and do lift. An historic object should never be dragged. Time and its allies are busy 24 hours a day assaulting 
our historic properties. With a plan and the right tools, you can hold the line. In the rest of this program, you will see techniques used to care for specific elements of historic properties.